I'm going to tell you the sad story of the typical Hashimoto's patient. So if you have Hashimoto's and you're still suffering any type of symptoms like weight gain, brain fog, depression, anxiety, all that kind of stuff, I think you're going to find today very helpful because there's a lot of lessons and a lot of really important information for you in this story. Now, it's a sad story, but it can have a happy ending, so stick with me. So let's go back. Our story begins about seven to 10 years before you finally got diagnosed with Hashimoto's. So before someone finally ran your thyroid antibodies test and they were high and you got diagnosed, let's go back seven to 10 years before that because that's about how long it usually takes for someone to get diagnosed with Hashimoto's. The symptoms of the Hashimoto's usually start about seven to 10 years before you finally get diagnosed. And that's really bad because if someone seven to 10 years ago had been proactive and tested your antibodies, there's a very good chance that you could have been avoiding the damage that happened in those intervening years. So seven to 10 years ago, what happens? Uh, this could be a woman who's in her 20s, 30s, 40s. Hashimoto's doesn't discriminate that much. Hashimoto's can get triggered though around puberty, perimenopause, pregnancy, after big illnesses. So that's a lot of the different times when it seems to turn on. But the symptoms that you probably had were something like the following. You started to get fatigued, uh, tired, you know, like feeling like you had to sleep more than you should or have to sleep more than eight hours to just even function. You started to get maybe some of the classic weight gain problems, which is you're gaining weight even though you might be on a low calorie diet or you may be exercising, you're still gaining weight and you can't lose weight. You may have also started to develop hair loss, right? Thinning of the hair. Uh, I have some videos on different types of hair loss, but generally speaking, the most common one is diffuse, right? You start getting a thinning of the hair. Sometimes you might lose a little hair on the, the outer third of your eyebrow. Uh, you can also get problems with the GI system that are kind of classic, like constipation. Sometimes it goes to diarrhea. You can get brain fog if we're talking about cognitive things where you're just not thinking sharp. You're having short-term memory problems, having trouble remembering things, depression, anxiety. There's a long list. So about seven to 10 years ago, that's when that stuff probably started. And then at some point, uh, if you didn't try to treat yourself, uh, you went and saw a, a doctor, meet your primary care doctor, OBGYN, one of those people. And I think they all mean well, but I think they all vastly underestimate how common Hashimoto's is. And they all aren't really trained in what to do to be proactive. So when you went and got tested, if you even got tested, uh, you may have just simply got a TSH test done. Why? Because they work in an insurance model. And in an insurance model, they don't have very much time to talk to you. Uh, they don't have very much time to do a lot of critical thinking. They're pretty much gonna say, okay, you're tired and fatigued, uh, we'll run some labs. And if they're normal, I don't know. And what almost never gets ran is thyroid antibodies. Why not? Well, it doesn't get run because the insurance companies are basically directing what the doctors do. And I think that's a problem, okay? I think that's a big problem because the insurance companies are not doctors. They should not be establishing the standard of care. I think every doctor should be applying their own experience and acumen to deciding uh, what makes sense. And for me, uh, I can tell you, if you start experiencing weight gain, tiredness, hair loss, brain fog, thyroid's the first thing I'm gonna think of. Now, to be fair, those symptoms overlap with blood sugar and some other things, but the point is, you probably didn't get tested the way you should have been tested because the insurance company wouldn't pay for it, right? So then what happens? Well, you wander for a while, perhaps a few years. Symptoms don't get better. They're typically going to get worse. I mean, you may have a, you know, a month or two or six months where they're not as bad, but typically they're going to get progressive worse over time. And you may start to pick up other things along the way, right? You may start to get uh, bad joint pain, bad muscle pain. In fact, your blood sugar might go up. Your cholesterol might go up. I have a video that explains why Hashimoto's patients often have that. And then maybe you get tested again, and this time they might do a TSH and a free T4. And unless your TSH is elevated, and unless your free T4 is low, they're probably not gonna do anything. Uh, in fact, what they might do, and this really makes me mad, is most women, most, most Hashimoto patients are women, uh, is you're probably gonna get recommended an antidepressant because, hey, you know, you've got kids, life is stressful, you're probably just depressed. And I think that kind of minimizes and sort of like almost infantilizes uh, and doesn't really give women the respect they deserve for this. And again, it's not that the doctors mean, you know, that's not that they're evil or whatever. They mean well. I just think that they're in a model and a system that kind of handcuffs them. And then their thinking starts to fit the shape of their container, <laughs> right? If your container is this big and, you know, I, this is all the stuff I can consider and I've only got five minutes, then that's what your thinking is going to be. So you probably stepped outside that box and you maybe went on the internet, uh, read a book about how to heal your thyroid or that kind of stuff. And you probably still haven't had your antibodies checked. Well, the problem is 
a lot of the books and the courses and stuff you can take, if you don't know you have Hashimoto's and you do some of the things that they recommend, you could very easily mess yourself up. And I mean big time because Hashimoto's is an autoimmune problem. And unless you know you have that autoimmune problem, and unless you know what your immunophenotype is, right, your particular flavor of Hashimoto's, you can very easily make the wrong uh, make the wrong decision and mess yourself up. In fact, I have a whole series of videos on, you know, the biggest mistakes that Hashimoto's patients make. Uh, some of those mistakes include taking iodine, taking immune boosting, immune boosting supplements, you know, basically self-treating it all. But I understand why you would do it because if you're not getting any help or any, you know, any progress seeing your in the box insurance doctors, then you're probably going to try to do it yourself. And I understand, but you're not trained, right? You don't have all the years of experience and all that kind of stuff. And so you're kind of just reaching for whatever makes sense. So what happens then? Well, on this journey, you know, where we started seven to 10 years before and you haven't gotten any better, now you've probably got three or four things under your belt that haven't worked, right? Maybe you decided to do a paleo diet. Maybe you decided to do a carnivore diet. Maybe you, you know, I'll take zinc and I'll take selenium. The problem is that approach where you're doing like one thing at a time almost never works, right? It almost never works. It has to be an overall strategy. So changing your diet, might help some of you and maybe it's a home run, but for most of you that have Hashimoto's, changing your diet to some degree is probably not going to do it. There's other things that have to be addressed. I mean, what, what I call them the four priorities and those have to be looked at. But, you know, I don't, I don't hold it against you because, you know, <laughs> you did what you had to do, right? You're out there trying to get better because you have a life and you want to feel better, uh, but you're not. Now, somewhere along the way, someone finally decides to test your antibodies and that is kind of a red letter day. Because if an endocrinologist, medical endocrinologist, tests your thyroid antibodies, that's not going to change what they're going to tell you to do, okay? Because for them, it doesn't really matter, really, if you have Hashimoto's or not. Uh, if you're hypothyroid, TSH is high, free T4 is low, then they're, they're going to give you medication. It doesn't matter if you have Hashimoto's. In fact, a lot of them are probably going to tell you it doesn't matter what you eat. It doesn't matter. There are nothing things you can take uh, to make Hashimoto's better, and it's just not true, right? So down that path... Uh, you might start taking levothyroxine. That you need because you now are overtly hypothyroid, right? So in the beginning, uh, no one tested your antibodies, but they were probably there. And then when they finally tested your antibodies, maybe you were euthyroid or subclinical, but if you were overtly hypothyroid, meaning TSH is high, free T4 is low, you're going to get prescribed something like Synthroid or levothyroxine, which you probably need, but even that is not going to be the thing that makes it a whole, uh, you know, a whole new day because that... You know, you have a quantity problem at that point, but just because you take the hormones doesn't mean you're going to get the advantage of using them. Of course, I have videos that explain what we're talking about, but basically Hashimoto's patients can have a quantity problem or they can have a usage problem. The vast majority of people, I mean, almost all the people that make it to me, they don't have a quantity problem. What they have is a usage problem because their thyroid hormone receptors are not functioning and it's because their immune system is not really under control. The Synthroid and the Levothyroxine, that doesn't do much for your autoimmune problem. I mean, I'm, practically nothing. So you're still walking around with an autoimmune problem that's still causing issues in all different corners of your biochemistry, right? You can imagine your Hashimoto is like an octopus sitting on your back, right? And it's got all these tentacles in different parts of your biochemistry messing with things. And the Levothyroxine is not going to do that. So what happens is you go back to the endocrinologist and they say, hey, TSH is good, free T4 is good, you don't have a thyroid problem. This can't be a Hashimoto's thing. Whatever you're feeling still, whether it's brain fog or the weight gain or whatever, it can't be that. You need to go see a psychiatrist, right? Or you need to stop eating Snickers and exercise, which is, you know, pretty insulting because almost no one's doing that, right? People are, are trying to get better. They're usually making what they think are the right decisions. So now you're frustrated, right? So you went through sort of the typical medical model and now you're reaching out maybe for something else and unfortunately, and I hope I don't step on too many toes, you're going to come across some well-meaning alternative practitioners who want to help you, but frankly, they're, a lot of what I see them uh, telling people is just not correct. It's either kind of half of what should be being done. Sometimes it's exactly wrong because a lot of them don't even do any lab testing, right? They don't do any lab testing. They say, well, you know, you have Hashimoto's, you're taking uh, levothyroxine, you must have a yeast problem or a mercury problem. And they don't do any testing. They start giving you supplements uh, that can, again, be exactly wrong for you based on what your immunophenotype is, right? And I keep talking about that, but immunophenotype just means, you know, what is your immune system actually doing? Because just because you have Hashimoto's doesn't mean your immune system under the hood is doing exactly what the other person with Hashimoto's is doing, right? We've all got our own individual fingerprints and... 
just because you have Hashimoto's uh, doesn't tell me exactly what your immune system is doing. You have to do the right testing. Some of the testing I do, uh, I do what's called a lymphocyte uh, map or uh, lymphocyte immunophenotyping. But anyway, you, I can imagine a lot of people, as you can imagine, people that, to get to me, they're very frustrated because they've gone down this route, which is the, you know, the standard medical, you know, in the box route. And that might've worked because you know, they do need to take the hormones, but they have all these symptoms left over. And so then they see alternative practitioners that are slightly outside of this box, but they're living in, <laughs> they're living in a little box as well. Uh, a lot of them mean well, but just don't have the training or experience to really understand the physiology, all the different tests that need to be ordered or don't need to be ordered, how to interpret those tests. A lot of them mean well, but usually all they really have is a, a phase one, right? So they say, oh, uh, we're going to do this GI test because, you know, the GI tract is clearly the source of all Hashimoto's. And now here's this nine month plan. Well, nine months is uh, a little long, I think, to find out if something is working. I, I use a different standard. I mean, I use a 30 day uh, kind of a bar. So the way I do my treatment plans, the 30 days is enough time for us to find out if we're moving the needle, right? It's not going to take nine months to figure out if we're getting better. So again, people mean well, but they just don't have a lot of the training and the experience. But where does that leave you, the typical Hashimoto's patient? Leaves you frustrated, uh, leaves you sad, and it leaves you symptomatic feeling bad. Now, I told you this was a sad story, but it could have a happy ending. Well, what, what could be the happy ending? The happy ending is when you find someone that understands all the stuff that I've talked about. Like if you just go look at my channel and look at all these videos I've made on Hashimoto's, make sure you're working with someone that understands all of that stuff, understands how to find out what's going on with your immune system really. What do you do for that? What testing makes sense in your case? Not just cookie cutter, oh, everyone that comes with Hashimoto's, we do, the, we do these four tests, and that tells us exactly what we need to know. Because look, that's going to work like 30% of the time, but for a large chunk of people, it's not going to work. And I can tell you that because uh, I'm not going to drop names here, but there's a lot of very famous kind of thyroid people. And I see a lot of their patients that don't get better. And that's not to slam the doctor. That's just to say that that kind of cookie cutter approach is not going to work very well for more than about 30% of people. So you, you need to make sure that you stop the story, the path that you're on and Find someone that understands about the immune system, understands about uh, all the subtleties in that. And I wish I could name them, but if you just go through, <laughs> just go through my channel, right, and say, okay, well, I got to find someone that understands all of that stuff. If you do that, you're finding, looking for someone that can be a detective, right? Not a robot, not a technician, but a detective. Someone that hasn't given up their, you know, hasn't given up their responsibility for thinking for lab tests. Yeah, do I use lab tests? Sure, absolutely, but lab tests are a guide. We don't treat the test, right? We treat you, right? You, you are the test. The lab tests we refer to, they help guide us, but you got to have the right experience. You got to have the, you know, the right uh, training and you can find someone like that. And if you do, you can turn your story around and give it a happy ending. It doesn't have to continue to be sad. Okay. So I made this video to help some of you that I know are watching that are frustrating. You see yourself and all that stuff I just said, there is still hope. This sad story of the typical Hashimoto's patient that starts seven to 10 years ago, uh, you can turn it around and you can give it a happy ending. You just got to make sure you're working with the right doctor that understands all the stuff that I've talked about, all the stuff you see on the channel, uh, and things can get better. Okay. I'll see you next time. See you later.